What's up, y'all? This is Brave, and I'm back for another review of Kiki Wyatt World. This is Season 1, Episode 3, and the episode is titled, It's My Party, and I'll Cry If I Want To. So, we actually start this episode off really sad, because we've learned that Keziah has had to go to the hospital yet again. Unfortunately, now the baby has been diagnosed with epilepsy on top of everything else that he has going on medically. And we do see Kiki have a meeting with the kids and, you know, they just want to know what's going on. So Kiki tells them about the epilepsy and she tells them to, you know, keep visiting the hospital and to keep trying to, you know, create some normalcy in that baby's life. Now, here's my thing when I was watching that scene, because first of all, we had um, some flashbacks i believe of kiki going through it because her son had cancer so i can't even imagine i cannot imagine at all how she feels that i just had one son battling cancer that required us to you know go in and out of the hospital now we're doing it again with a whole other child with the set a different set of problems so i can't imagine how that feels um but here's what threw me off the older kids, they're like questioning if Kiki will allow them to help her, right? And I'm just like, well, aren't y'all the same kids who didn't want to babysit, who wasn't really trying to help? What kind of help can y'all really offer this lady? Like, be for real. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be funny, but I just feel like the kind of support that Kiki actually needs, this family is not the support system for that. I think they can support each other, look out for each other and all of that. But Kiki needs some qualified professionals. And I'm not saying that in a negative way. I'm saying Kiki should, you know, get a night nurse. Kiki needs to get a therapist. Kiki needs to go see somebody about this postpartum depression. Like, there's a list of things going on. I'm not exactly sure what the kids can help with. Besides looking out for each other, like I said. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and move on because we actually see Andre. He meets up with Kiki's mom and she basically tells him that Kiki is not okay. Kiki needs some help. And Andre, he doesn't like the fact that Kiki, she can be very mean and there's no real accountability from her. So he suggests that she goes to see a therapist. And I think that it's a good idea. However... The mom is just like, we need to support her. We need to be her support system. And I'm just like, you can do both. You absolutely can do both, mom. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and move on. Now, y'all, we see Kizzy in the studio with Johnny. And the more I hear her sing, the more that I think she needs to go ahead and stick to songwriting. Because the singing is not for her. But nonetheless, we get a little bit more background on the fact that she has been friends with Kiki for, what was it, 15 years or so? So now I'm not even going to hold y'all. I'm giving a major side eye to Kizzy. Because why is it that now that you're on this show, you want to start bringing people around that you know Kiki don't rock with? It's, it's, it's giving a little bit of messiness because it's not making any sense. Nonetheless, um, we have a conversation between Johnny and Kizzy. This man tells her he booked her a show, right? And she's like, oh, okay, cool. How much am I getting booked for? This man said $225. I said, girl, you could have booked yourself for that. $225? No offense. And I'm not trying to, you know, shame anybody for how much they get paid, but like, it sounds like you could have got yourself booked for that amount of money. And then he flipped this on her, y'all. He tells her, yeah, because, you know, we got to shoot a video. Because when I heard that, whatever song she got, he's like, yeah, we got to hurry up. We got to shoot this video. You know, I'm trying to, uh, it don't matter if I use my money, whoever money, we going to get this video done. Right? He flipped it on her and was like, yeah, so the money that you booked from the show, you can put that on a music video. Girl, he got you paying for it. 
Johnny is playing with you again, okay? And it's clear you want to be played with. Because how is it that this man is scamming you right in front of your face and you not have an issue with that? It doesn't make sense. Like, am I crazy here? Because I don't think I am. Like, (laughs) girl, this man basically lied to your face and he would pay for your music video. Then once you got paid from this little gig that he booked, he making you use that money. Kizzy ain't too smart. She ain't too smart. Nonetheless, we actually see Kizzy. She is shooting this music video, right? Now, I just may have a high standard for music videos because I'm so used to an actual production crew. You know what I'm saying? Working on music videos. But this was a one and done. We got one person filming on an iPhone. The other person is um, actually filming with like a camera. And we gonna wrap this up real soon. Um, Come to find out she's working with a gospel artist who is signed to another gospel artist by the name of Lecrae. And like I said, I don't even know why she even invited them down here for this. Like, I know you have to start somewhere, but y'all just could have went out to dinner or something. Not this. But here's the thing. Who's also at this video shoot? Oh, Johnny. And it's like, Kizzy, do you want to get a reaction out of Kiki? I'm starting to think that you and Andre is orchestrating some stuff behind the scenes. Because that's what it's given to me. So, Kiki, when she gets there whatever, and they actually go inside, she sees that Johnny is there. Of course, she has an attitude. She ends up whispering to Andre, like, why is he here on my show? This is my show. Why I don't like the fact that he's getting attention off of my TV show. Right? I said, baby girl's going to break the fourth wall. One thing about Kiki, I will say, is that she is very real. For sh- for sure, she's very real. Nonetheless, um, they end up wrapping up this video shoot. They all end up going outside. And Kizzy, you know, she tells him who the artist was that she was performing with. And how, you know, he's a gospel artist. And Kiki is like, okay, so are you going to do gospel now? And she's like, no, I'm not doing gospel now, but, you know, he's big in the gospel world. And, again, Kiki's a little confused because if you say you want to do R&B, why are you hopping on gospel tracks? Like, don't try to confuse your audience. Um, Then Kiki's like, so why is Johnny here? Like, what's he around for? And Kizzy, she is convinced that she's woke. I'm so woke, 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 woke about this man. And I'm just like, girl, let Kizzy get played. Just let her, just let her get played because clearly she wants to. I don't know if Kizzy and Johnny had a thing going on before because that's the only reason why I can think that she would keep that man around. It's not making any sense because like Kiki said, you don't need him around. The things that he booking you on, you can do yourself. So, here's the thing. Kizzy has now been approached by a whole different manager, right? Who wants to work with her. Okay. Kiki's like, okay, who is the person? Once she says the name, Kiki is automatically pissed off. Okay? Kiki already has had an issue with this man from when she was a kid. Okay? She was about 10, 11 years old trying to get started in the music industry. This man said some horrible, nasty things to her, talked about her weight, talked about how she can never do this, never do that, really demeaned a child. And who does that? Because if anything, you're supposed to build up a child. And I get it. A lot of people may say, well, she needs to let that go because that happened to her when she was a child. Let me tell you something. Honestly, even if you may have received uh, belt whoopings and all of that a lot of times you don't even remember that okay but what you do remember is when somebody said the most horrible nasty things to you and that's the stuff that really stick with you okay like I feel like for some reason people try to make it seem like saying horrible things to children they'll just get over it no they don't get over it Like, I can't imagine being 10 years old and here comes some man telling me all the things that I'm not going to be. That is horrible. What type of self-esteem do you want these kids to have in the future? So I absolutely understand where Kiki is coming from. 
the way that man probably was, you know, 20, 30 years ago, he probably still that same way. I would not be surprised. Nonetheless, she don't want this man around. Again, I understand Kiki because another reason why she don't want this man around or his name mentioned, because why should he get clout off of my TV show when he did me wrong back in the past? No, 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 no. Kiki made a name for herself and that was without that man, whoever he is. I don't think that her requesting them not to say his name should have been as big as it was. However, here comes Andre, who I still believe is orchestrating stuff. Andre is like, Kiki, you need to go ahead and put your feelings to the side. You know, it's not that deep or whatever. And here's my thing. Kiki, she feels a way about grimy people. People who are, you know, being mean. People who have been nasty towards her. People who do other people wrong. It is very clear that she don't rock with those type of people. So why do you two keep trying to bring them around? I'm trying to figure that out because it's not making any sense to me at all. Like, why are all these people who have done Kiki wrong or you know she don't care for coming out of the woodworks now that she's on a TV show? That doesn't make sense to me. So Kiki, she's like adamant that, listen, this is my show. And Andre's like, it's our show. I'm sorry, I am Team Kiki all the way this episode, y'all. If it was not for Kiki Wyatt, who we all know, there would be no show. And Andre is like, well, I'm an executive producer. And I'm just like, are you serious Like right now? You want to throw an executive producer title in Kiki's face which she made you the executive producer. She gave you that title out of kindness. It's not like you're really being an EP in any way, shape, or form when it comes to this show besides you trying to contrive some messed up storylines to get Kiki riled up. That's the only type of EP that you're doing. But nonetheless, what's bothering me about this whole entire situation is that Kiki is basically letting them know, these are my boundaries. Do not mention these people. And here we go with Andre trying to make this a big ordeal. It is like, just don't mention the names. Just move forward with the conversation. That's all you had to do. So it gets very heated to the point where Kiki, you know, she's like, okay, fine. Since y'all want to act like this, y'all can have a show without me. This could be y'all show then. Baby, let me tell you something. We ain't checking for no Andre show or Kizzy at all. So Kiki ends up getting up and she even goes over to the producers and they're just like, what's going on? Why are you mad? And I'm just like, why are the producers having that energy? <laughs> That's a problem. Number one. Number two, she's asking him like, whose show is this? I don't know if the show have a title yet or not, but last time I checked, it was Kiki Wyatt's show. And it is, girl. It is. So we then see Kiki have a conversation with Kizzy or whatever. Uh, they, like, met up in the car. And Kiki's like, listen, um, is it me? Or is Andre out here showing his true colors? I said, no, he's showing his true colors because Andre wants to film scenes. Andre wants to be seen. And if it's off the back of you, then that's what he's willing to do. So, Kiki again says that it's her show, and Kissy, she basically has the assumption that the show is Andre's show as well. Again, all because you have a little title, that don't mean you really hold any weight, especially when it comes to reality TV, and your friend gave you something just to kind of throw you a bone. Okay, that's exactly what that was. Kiki just threw you a bone. You don't hold no weight in production. Like, I am so over Andre after this episode, y'all. I really am. Because at one point, Kiki was talking to old girl. And she was like, his show? Who would even want to watch, you know, a show with Andre? Now, I have no idea how he was able to hear her say that. Considering he's mic'd up as well. And he 
shouldn't be able to hear what's going on in that car. That was strange. I'm going to assume production just sent him over there. You know what I'm saying? To get the mess started up again. And he's like, you know, I don't understand why Kiki, she's being so mean. Um, you know, she's so ugly towards her friends. Baby, listen, Andre is also BS. Okay. Because I feel like well, as he was walking away, he just had to have something to say. He had to get the last word in. Boy, bye. So, in the next scene, we see Kiki and her husband. Y'all, I really want Kiki to go buy her husband some clothes. Please go buy that man some clothes because we are tired of the black tank top, black do-rag, black pants. I'm like, do he have on black Air Forces too? We're tired. Nonetheless, they end up going out to dinner or whatever, and Kizzy shows up. Now, she says that she never saw Kiki and Andre go at it like that, and Kiki does have a really big meeting with her label coming up, so she's hoping that these two can get along, right? Um, another thing is that Kiki is like, well, it would look crazy if we go into this meeting and we're not on the same accord. Like, come on now. Basically saying she's going to be professional. So, Kizzy, she feels like Kiki is trying to self-sabotage. And I'm like, how is she trying to self-sabotage? Like, no, she's just not playing into the game that you and Andre have tried to set up. But let's go ahead and move on. So, we have Kiki. She's visiting her son in the hospital. And, you know, she's so happy to be around her baby. Uh, We actually got a little background information uh, from... Zachariah, because when he was a baby, he was actually in and out of the hospital a lot because he had his own health issues. So for him, like this hits home because he had to go through these types of things. And I can only imagine what that feels like. You know what I'm saying? But y'all, let's go ahead and move on. So we see Kiki. She's meeting up with somebody from the label or whatever, and they talk about the album and how they want to release it in line with when the show comes out. Now, Kiki, she feels like she has nothing to show for all the years that she has worked in the entertainment industry. She doesn't have any awards, any um, uh, accolades, anything like that besides, you know, she has her hit singles, but she doesn't have anything that says like, hey, you killed it that year you deserved it we're going to award you you know what I'm saying and I can understand how that may feel because there are so many artists and I mean so many artists who have received nothing over the years and they have provided some great quality music that we all listen to and it is kind of sad that because there is so much you know stiff competition for certain you know artists that you're not going to win You know what I mean? Like, especially if there's bigger artists in the category. It's a lot that goes into it. But nonetheless, I really do hope that Kiki, she is awarded something at some point. You know what I'm saying? So, um, the meeting, it goes very well. That's the guy's name, Randall, with Randall. Um, However, once that man leaves, Kiki and Andre have a conversation. Now, this man, he starts off by saying, first of all, And Kiki's like, hold on now. Don't first of all me. Because where I'm from, first of all, sounds like it's very confrontational. And it is. Because if a person is saying, first of all, that means they about to list off some things that they don't like about something you did. So he doesn't lead with that. But Andre, he ends up thanking her for being professional in the meeting and showing up. And Kiki's like, yeah, you ain't got to thank me for that. However, baby girl is waiting on an apology. And Andre, he don't think that he owes her one. So Kiki, she, of course, has to bring Kizzy into this. In a minute, she's like, do I have to call her? What's going on here? And they talk about what happened at the video shoot. And Kiki, she feels like, listen, if people have done me wrong in the past, she's leaving them in the past. Why would I bring them to my new situation, my new show? If that man hurt this girl when she was 10 years old, Kiki got to be in her, what, 40s now? I'm not talking about that man 30 years later, and I actually made something of myself, something that he told me that I would never be. Why would I talk about that man? 
So she goes further to say, listen, this is my show and I do want to have control over what is mentioned on the show. Now, here comes Andre. Oh, this is a control thing. I said, no, that's not what this is, baby. Not at all. At this point, Andre is over here playing dumb and playing in Kiki's face. And now Kiki is pissed all over again. So we see her go over to her husband. She's like, did you just hear what he said to me? I'm ready to go. So that's what she does. Her and her husband, they end up walking out the door. Um, Kiki gets in the car. She don't want to, you know, open up the door for nobody. She don't want to roll down her window. She is done with this conversation with Andre. Now, I thought Andre, he actually just wanted to sit there, eat his little bowl of fruit that he had. But next thing you know, he ended up coming outside and he's like, oh, well, Kiki said F you to me. She knows not to say that. That's a boundary for me. And I'm like, okay, but she's setting her boundaries. And for some reason, you feel like you can just go against what she's saying. Like, I'm sorry, Andre, you got to go, buddy. You really do. Because you really want to be a star. You really want to be on TV. That's what it's given. Like, I just think that Andre, he wants to be the star. And he doesn't care how he does it. Even if it hurts Kiki. Because him wanting to say those people's names makes no sense to me. But nonetheless, y'all, let me know what y'all thought about this episode. Are y'all Team Andre or Team Kiki? Go ahead and let me know in the comment section. And go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, share my video. And I will talk to y'all in my next review. Bye, guys.